Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2022 Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid Limited with the S appearance package. This vehicle is sitting on 235-60 Nexen tires wrapped around 18-inch alloy wheels with a satin gray finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Velvet Red Pearl Coat. And the color is really nice. I get a lot of compliments. People will mention uh, the color first thing when they see the vehicle. It's really impressive. Hopefully the camera is picking it up okay. So here in the front we have a combination of gloss black and flat black. So the grill here in the center part is a gloss black. And then the actual emblem is that matte, like a, a satin or a flat black here. Same thing with the the uh, the frame around the outside, the bezel. You have more of that gloss black here at the bottom. Uh, now there's parking sensors integrated here. Also the radar adaptive cruise control is integrated as well, and that's a gloss black. There's more sensors here as well. There's also a camera here in the very center, just under the badge, integrated nicely. Uh, it does, the, the, only, the only issue with this camera position uh, is that it does get a glimpse of like things around. It's kind of a little bit recessed too much uh, to where, you know, you can see some of the surroundings there, which causes, sometimes causes a problem. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to the camera on the screen. So the headlights uh, have a full night video and this vehicle has LED bifunction headlights and reflector high beams as well as reflector fog lights as well. And they do a pretty decent job. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like going down the road. Um, it has LED accents up here as well. Uh, but yeah, I show everything on the night video showing you the inside and outside of the vehicle. So you can check that out if you're interested in the lights specifically. Uh, it's a separate video. So looking at the profile here, uh, you can see these wheels. I'm not 100% on these wheels. You let me know what you think in the comments right here. They're like a satin or flat black or gray, dark gray, not really black. And um, so with a nice color like this, they kind of, they, they just seem like they don't really, I guess, I guess they're okay, but uh, it, my particular preference is uh, that, you know, look better with something a little bit different. Now it has these gloss black pillars here, they're kind of solidifying all the windows and then it's kind of surrounded by this gloss black trim around the outside which is pretty cool it kind of emphasizes the length because it does get kind of fat back here so if you emphasize the length a little bit more it kind of makes it less look fat looking uh, which gives you lots of room on the inside though this is what the key looks like and it's a full proximity key buttons are very easy to read it looks nice it looks fancy it's got the Chrysler emblem there on the back side uh, chrome there on the edges as well it has you can use the vehicle 100 but the buttons are so convenient that you'll want to take it out of your pocket and use it um, so it has the lock and unlock buttons the ability to open up the power lift gate remote start as well as opening up either side door so the vehicle's positioned like this so the right one will be the opposite the one on the far side there and then the closer button here would uh, match the the door on this side um, then you, of course you have a panic button as well let's go ahead and push that has a really loud horn, so the first thing I did when I got it was disable the beeping the horn every time you lock it and every time you remote start it, because uh, it, it's very loud. Um, so yeah, in addition to these buttons here on the, on the on the key, you can kick your leg and open up the, the power lift gate or these side doors. Um, but when you have that feature turned on, if you're like drying the vehicle or washing the vehicle and you have the key in your pocket, it's really hard to keep the door shut because it's constantly opening up doors as you're wiping your hands around, uh, especially towards the bottom there. So keep that in mind. Uh, the system works good, but a little bit too good sometimes. Now there's actually comes with two keys and the second key is is the key sense key So this one doesn't have that name on the back But the other one says key sense back here and basically what it does is the ability to um, When you have that key only and then you drive the vehicle You can set up different preferences that are tied to that key and and some of the things are uh, Like limit the high speed like when I got in the vehicle with the key sense key It's like maximum speed 80 miles per hour couldn't turn off the uh, parking sensors, that kind of thing. So you can actually customize the key sense key um, for another driver that maybe you want to have some limits on. 
Now, as long as you have the key with you, you don't have to take it out of your pocket. You can have it in a bag, in your pocket, whatever. As long as, long as it's on the outside of any one of these doors, uh, you can lock the door by pushing that button. So it locks the door, and I disabled the horn, so that's good, because before you would like beep the horn every time you lock the door. Now, to unlock it, as long as the key's on the outside of the door, there's a sensor back here. Just put your hand back there. It senses the key and allows you access to the vehicle. Uh, there's also a physical key location here, right here on the driver's side only. Here in front of this driver's door, there's this little, what looks like a fuel door, uh, but this is has a big, a nice E with a blue leaf on it, which is interesting. Uh, but when you open this up, this is actually the charge port because this is a plug-in hybrid. So, so it's a hybrid vehicle, but it's a a plug-in hybrid. And and the thing about a plug-in hybrid is you have to be willing to. And this is why I'm covering this early on in the video, is that you have to be willing to plug it in every night, and you have to be um, not driving like long, super long distances regularly. So. You know, you do. if you don't plug it in, then the battery does, gets depleted and just stays there and you're just driving around with this heavy battery and you're not getting the benefit. So you have to plug it in every night and you have, and it will go about 30, 40 miles and uh, before the battery is depleted and it just kind of automatically uses the battery power first. So you can't, you know, save it for later or anything like that. Uh, so, you know, if you're driving short distances regularly, you don't mind plugging it in, and you have the ability to plug it in, um, then this vehicle might be for you. But if those factors are not, you're not able to plug it in, and you don't feel like plugging it in, then you probably want to skip any plug-in hybrid, not just this vehicle. Here's the inside of the passenger side door, mostly black. It does have some white stitching, and that's the way that basically the whole vehicle is. It's got white stitching, black, and then like some silver accents. <laughs> so the door kind of summarizes the whole interior here. Now it's an injection molded uh, soft touch surface here at the top, like a vinyl type material for the armrest, which is nice and soft. It continues around all the way around here. This is all soft touch here. And this contrast stitching is in a French double stitch design. This, this handle for closing the door is enclosed and has a little pad at the bottom so you can utilize that as a pocket. Same thing here, another little quick access pocket, put a key or whatever. Same thing here, and then you have the larger door pocket at the bottom and a cup holder, or bottle holder really. So a lot of different places to put stuff and you can separate things and that's, I like that kind of thing. Now it has a fairly large uh, uh, threshold here with just a regular plastic sill plate, but you can see this quite a ways there to get in the vehicle so this is kind of wide now it doesn't have a like a big threshold that sticks up so you have to lift your leg over um, so the benefit is that you can just kind of slide your legs in but it is kind of a wide space there uh, so you know that's something to consider if you have mobility issues or whatever now right in here is a place to put an umbrella which is pretty cool it even has a little rain cloud there with rain coming down and an umbrella that it's landing on so cluing you in that you can put an umbrella there of course one of the shorter type so it's a power seat here on the passenger side you're able to go up and down tilt and then tilt the back and then a four-way lumbar adjustment so uh, typically passenger seats don't have all that functionality so that's pretty good now these are Lapa, Napa leather seats uh, Napa leather seats and it has a cloth here on the very edge where it meets up with the hard plastic and this is um, to protect the actual leather so that cloth is more supple it can and, and it can rub against that hard plastic for a long time without any problems uh, and it kind of saves the leather and then right here is the piping it's kind of like an off-white type, uh, type piping right here or silver you have stitchings perforated seats they are heated and ventilated three stage And they also have an S embroidered in the back of the seat because this has the S appearance package. As in sport, like sporty looking. Now the floor mat snaps in place so it doesn't slide around on you. Plenty of room, but it does start to taper quite a bit right here. Uh, so it's nice and wide, but there's a little bit of tapering going on there. And so it kind of narrows where your feet go, but, uh, but still a pretty good amount of room. 
There's also like a little storage area right here that's accessible for the driver and passenger. It's in this very low position. Um, there's no illumination under here as well. It's kind of like a spoiler for the night video. But um, so you can put like a bag or something there, but it's kind of not super easy to reach and get to for like small items, that kind of thing. Especially for the driver, because you have the steering wheel in the way. Lockable glove compartment here, and pretty good size, just smooth plastic on the inside. Uh, and there's the manual and all that stuff in there. Kind of has a neat bag that it goes into. All right, so right in here, uh, so this is hard touch at the bottom, and then right in here is like an injection molded soft. Same thing with up here, and it has some stitching in there as well. Non-reflective uh, injection molded type stuff. And then this is, you know, simulated stitching. It's not actually stitched together. So you won't have any problem with heat, you know, separating that over the years. And then there's a uh, there's a handle to get, help you get in the vehicle and out. So like I mentioned, that does have the ability to like kick your foot and open up the door. Um, so it's in that general area there. You just kind of move your foot underneath there and or swipe your leg left to right or wherever it's, it's pretty much anything you put your foot there it'll open up the door now the front door is the swing of the door is good the lots of headroom here getting in and out of the vehicle is a breeze the height of the seat is off the ground uh, is really good so you can just kind of quickly just go in and out without climbing in or falling in or whatever uh, it's just a really good height and easy to get in and out of the vehicle so the back door same way it's just wide open space you know plenty of room to get in and out even has a handle to help you as well and it has the the bucket seats here for the second row and they're nice they have the same kind of deal here with the perforations the piping uh, they just don't have the embroidered s in the back but they're very similar to the front seats now the back of the front seats is like this hard plastic here, but it does have a pocket that's like a vinyl type material and there's a little spot to put the remote control uh, for this uh, this system here, you know, entertainment system, I'll get to that in a minute, but there's this pocket here and then there's little bag holders here on the edges. So you can, those come in handy. Those bag holders, uh, when you're carrying around, especially like grocery bags or any kind of bag, uh, if you just lay it on the floor, it could, could kind of slide around. But being able to ha hook the handle on those bag holders, it keeps it keeps it in this position, upright, and you you know you you know right where it's going to be. It's not going to be kicking around on the floor so much. Okay, so this these screens are pretty interesting because um, the the system is designed to where you can have something playing on this one separate from the other side, and you have a inputs here auxiliary input hdmi input and then a usb um, charge port here so, uh, this is usb c charge port and these are backlit as well so unlike the regular pacifica this non-hybrid uh, these seats do not fold into the floor but they are removable so you can get these seats out of here if you need to uh, so it's something to consider if you you know the, the hybrid is is a little bit limited as far as that goes the third row does fold down but this second row does not so sitting in the second row uh the second row seat here plenty of room here um six feet tall and no problem sitting in this seat it's very comfortable and lots of room there completely flat floor so the climate control for the uh the back passengers is controlled right here now you can control it in the front uh but this is where it's controlled, um, you know, so if you want to, if you're, if you're sitting in the back, you want to sit in this seat so that way you have access to this. You got, you got climate control vents and all that stuff. Uh, there's also little microphones back here, and I'll show you what that's for when we get to the front. Uh, so you got little lights here as well. There's a button here for closing the door. There's also a button down here to move this front seat. So let's go ahead and push that button. And what happens is this seat goes forward and tilts forward and this function is primarily for the Pacifica that folds the seat into the floor uh, but it's really handy for entering in the second and third rows uh, to use that that button 
Another thing is when you push it again, the seat goes back to the exact position it was before. Because if you just start moving the controls to move that seat, then you'll have to put it back and you might not get it 100% right uh, the way you had it before. But having this button to push, you just push it, it gets the seat out of the way, you push it again, and the seat goes right back exactly the where, where it was, which is nice. This button is to close the door here on the side. So just a child can sit back here and close the door easily. They don't have to be tugging on it or anything. There's shades back here on the second and third row. There's a power window, door lock control, cup holder, um, you know, mostly hard plastics. So basically all hard plastics. So it's not like a super fancy interior that can get damaged easily. Uh, also, you can push this button to open it up, or you can just basically pull back on this handle like that, and it'll open it up. So you can either way. Same thing with opening it from the outside. You just pull on the handle, um, and it'll open up, or you can use the key. There's different ways to open and close the doors. Also, the, the console here has this neat little thing here that slides out. It locks in place. That way it's not moving around and there's like a little handle under here that you have to press to release it. Uh, so you, ha you have a cup holder here in the center. You have a storage compartment that you can access as well. And this is also accessible to the front passengers. And you can put it all the way in if you want to. But it has these two different positions there. Lock it all the way out or lock it right there. Or you can lock it all the way in. So it's actually three positions. Entering the third row, uh, there's, a, there's a handle right here. Just reach up on that lift up on that and it releases the seat and the seat can go forward like so and then now you have this little space right here to kind of squeeze in uh, to the third row so I'm not going to get in the third row because it's a little bit too small for me but you notice that you notice that the, the the seat is not super low to the floor like some vehicles uh, the third row seat is like on the floor so this has a little bit more room there uh, but it also has on this side two USB charge ports, cup holders, and then on the other side has like a little phone holder and a cup holder there, and speakers. Apparently there's like 20 speakers in here. <laughs> All over the place apparently. Okay, so right here is a power inverter, and it's 150 watts, so you can like charge a laptop or something. It's kind of in this weird spot, but I guess you can reach it i get probably have to plug it in before you start driving because if you're sitting in this seat it's kind of kind of awkward i guess and then it's obviously awkward for the third row to reach so it's in this kind of a weird spot so you notice this uh dome light looking thing uh, we'll show you what that is. That's like the family cam is what they call it And I'll show you what that is when we get in to the front looking at the camera systems uh, It actually has night vision on it as well. So yeah closing this side door We can use the key we can push this button right here or we can just simply just tug on the handle like that and it'll close Taking a look at the back of the vehicle it has a body colored shark fin antenna here at the top center Third brake light is in the, right here in the top of the glass, rear glass in the rear spoiler. And you notice that the, the glass has this black portion, this little triangle here that kind of makes it look wider than what it actually is. Um, you know, just for looks apparently. And also it kind of extends in and kind of connects this whole tailgate, uh, taillight system together. And it actually does have an LED tail light system that connects all the way across so there's a glow red glow all the way across the back of the vehicle which looks great you got to check out my night video um, it also has this backup camera right here in the very center it's in the center position it's kind of a little bit higher up it is kind of integrated nicely I mean it could be I guess in this particular design this is about as high as you can go with it uh, it could be a little bit higher maybe, but ideally, but considering the, the glass and all that stuff here, this seems like that is the best place for it. But definitely have it in the center and integrated. It doesn't look like it's tacked on like under here somewhere and offset. Uh, it looks like it's integrated and it's designed for the vehicle and it's, you know, it doesn't look tacked on. 
Um, so you have the parking sensors across the back and it's all, these are all body colored, integrated here into the bumper cover. There's also one way over here on the side, right there. Now these are reflectors, they're not uh, lights or anything. Those are just reflectors. And the exhaust is mostly hidden right here on the right side. So opening up this power lift gate, once again, we can use the key or there's just a button under here. You just push that and it'll lift, lift up for you. So if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, uh, this will be your maximum cargo space. And considering it goes way down in here, uh, it is pretty good amount of room. Especially if you're getting like groceries and stuff like that. It's got these bag holders across the back here. Whole bunch of them. So you can keep certain bags upright. That kind of thing. But yeah, this is a really, really good amount of space in the cargo area. Considering the depth and the height and all that stuff. So there's a 12 volt power supply here on the right side. There's also tie downs here. You can put in uh, tie down stuff like a net pocket or whatever you can use utilize that also there's this little compartment here and this is where you'll find on the hybrid uh, the the actual charge cable and it comes with a 110 charge cable so it takes like five six hours or whatever to charge at home which is fine because you're probably charging it overnight um, but it's pretty much a standard this is the standard charge cable you'll find in most electric vehicles, except for Tesla. And that's what it looks like. It's pretty plain, just like a big charger, like so for your, for like your laptop or something. And you can see it's just a uh, regular 110 charger, but it, that does have a compartment for it. There's also a, a tire inflator kit in here as well. And there's enough room to where you can cram some more stuff in here. And so it's a lot of room. It's a nice little compartment. Uh, under that is another compartment. So this one, there's like a battery back here, like a 12 volt type battery. Uh, you can access that if you need to. Once you lower the headrest, all you have to do is pull this one right here and that releases the seat, uh, but it also allows the top portion to fold. So you can either pull this strap like so, if you don't wanna, if you can't reach in there, um, or you could just grab the seat and pull it like this and kind of do that and it'll it'll kind of flop down in place so now i've added to my cargo space uh as far as the load floor anyway uh, but you notice now it's not a deep floor anymore so the entire seat is folded down into that uh, lower recess portion but it does give you this pretty good size load floor here so let's go ahead and lower this one and now we can see we've got a huge wide open place for cargo. Now you can pull those seats forward and you know put some more stuff back here, or like I said, you can take those seats out and have a really wide open space. To lift the seats up, just lift this up like so and push it over and then pull this till it locks. Then you have to manually lift up the headrest so that now the seat's ready to use. You wanna make sure it's locked in place and good to go. The lower the power lift gate, there's a button here to the left, which is nice. So it's not like, it's not like up there somewhere. And it'll just beep at you, let you know it's coming down and then it'll come down and secure. It has a locking fuel door, little buttons right there to release it. Press and hold it. And it's here on the driver's side and it's a capless design. So you just simply put your nozzle in there, pump gas, and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about tightening a cap or losing a cap, anything like that. As long as you have this key inside the vehicle, uh, you just hold the brake and push this button to start it up. Now, you will not always hear the engine start, uh, but it will tell you that it's ready to drive. Um, it has a little indicator there and the climate control starts up and the 
the radio starts up and everything starts up just like normal except for the engine doesn't always turn on. So right now we have battery power, so it's gonna use that first. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Floor mat hooks in place. You can see that other side of that compartment I was talking about that the driver and passenger can use. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, nice big footrest there. And there's a little bit more leg room here for the driver, it seems like. So let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch a little tiny bit to the right of center. So there's the center line there, just a little bit to the right, right in here. So reach in, move it to the left, and lift up on the hood. So you can see there's a the latch right there. The hood's not super heavy, but it does require a prop to hold it up. Here's the prop, uh, indicated by yellow, and it swings up and goes to that square indicated by that arrow. Under the hood has insulation. There's also a seal around the entire uh, hood. So it seals up the engine compartment well. This helps out with noise and airflow. So the engine compartment is sealed up. And it has a uh, insulation there on the firewall. The firewall is kind of back up in there underneath this area here. And uh, the strut towers here in the front is braced in with the unibody structure. So that center brace right there that connects them kind of covers up this area. So this has a V6, which is a pretty beefy engine for a hybrid. And it's a 3.6 liter hybrid engine. So this engine um, you know, goes well with the hybrid system. And the transmission, uh, they are calling an E-Flight SI EVT transmission. So it's, it's quite a bit different than the regular Pacifica, which has the nine speed automatic transmission that you know they, they've had for a while now. The side mirrors have these little triangles in them and those are the indicator for the rear cross traffic alert and blind spot dissection system. They're also heated side mirrors as well. The inside of the driver's side doors, just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. We already saw the button to open up the fuel door, but it also has two presets for the power seat, uh, door lock controls, power windows, and the side mirrors are adjusted there. Now all the, the windows are, power, are, are one touch up and down. So it's one touch. There's a laminated glass as well. It goes up and down fairly fast. Now these windows back here, they're, they only go down that far. That's it. But it is one touch up and down. So the driver's seat basically has the same functionality as the passenger, where you can tilt, you can raise it, lower it, it has four-way lumbar adjustments, and there's even a, a place for an umbrella on this side as well. And these are heated and ventilated seats, and they look nice. You got the piping, the stitching, the perforations, and the S logo there. To the left of the steering column is your headlight switch. So it has, and I'll show you all this in the, in the night video on you know, what, what it looks like, uh, but it has the off parking lights, headlights, automatic, as well as the fog lights. You can push that button, turn those on. And it also has automatic high beams as well. Now the little, these little scroll wheels, this is for like this, uh, some ambient lighting in the vehicle, which is not a whole lot, but it has some in it. It was very useful though. And then this is the little scroll wheel is for the interior gauges. It also dims and, and it adjusts the lights on the screen and the backlit buttons as well. It looks really nice at nighttime. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that you lock in place here. Sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. I have the driver's seat all the way down and all the way back. I'm six feet tall, just to give you an idea of the potential leg room here. Now, the, the, being all the way back is slightly too far back for me to safely drive because uh, I could put my leg completely straight when I'm putting pushing the brake. Uh, so if you're a little bit over six feet tall, should be no problem driving this vehicle. There's plenty of uh, leg room and knee room here. This is soft right here, so if your leg touches it, it's not a big deal. The steering wheel, very thick steering wheel. Soft to the touch and very comfortable. Completely round on the outside. It does have some very mild bolstering, uh, not super aggressive on your hands, but the stitching is rather thick here in the center part. So there's buttons here on the front of the steering wheel, but there's also buttons on the back of the steering wheel. 
So back here, it's designed to where your, your fingers kind of line right up with it when you're holding the steering wheel here. There's a up, there's a down. I don't know if you can see that. There's an up and down, and then there's a center button. And basically the up and down here on the right side is for the volume for the radio. The center button is to change through the audio source. And it cycles through the available sources. So if you don't have a USB and you don't have a Bluetooth connected or anything like that, it'll just cycle through like the AM, FM, satellite radio, that kind of thing. On the left side back here, the up and down is to change through the audio tracks or the radio stations. The center button is just for the presets on the radio only. So that's the only thing that center button does on the left side. So here on the front, on the right side, is the adaptive cruise control. So it has the ability, to, you, you actually turn it on two ways. If you want regular cruise control, you push that button. If you want adaptive cruise control, you'd push that to turn it on. If you push this and then push that to turn on the adaptive, it just turns the system back off. Uh, so you start off with this if you want adaptive cruise control. You can set it, resume, cancel, and then you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. And I like the way it has uh, decrease or increase the distance. Two separate buttons. A lot of vehicles have a single button that you press and it cycles through the different di distances. So what will happen is I like a far distance. But let's say I want to bump it down to the next, almost to the farthest distance, basically. Let's say there's four bars, you want to bring it down to three. Well, on a single press button, you have to cycle through. And when you do that, what happens is it'll go to the closest distance. And you have to go through that in order to get back to the where you want it. And while you're doing that, it's speeding up and getting really close to the vehicle in front of you. So this avoids that problem by having two buttons. Um, you know, you can increase your distance or... Uh, or decrease your distance and you don't have to cycle through different preset distances uh, and get to the one you want basically land on it or rest on the one you want here on the left side is the phone button now it has once again two buttons one is to answer clearly marked in green and one is to hang up clearly marked in red so it's color coded and so you can make sure that you're hanging up uh, some vehicles have just one button where you press the button to answer and you press to hang up. The only problem with that is if you press the button to uh, hang up, thinking you're hanging up and actually somebody else is calling at the same moment, uh, you're actually answering another call and you don't even realize it uh, by pressing that button and you're putting the other person on hold. So, you know, so it could potentially be a little aggravating, you know, on those rare occasions. So this clearly defined separate buttons that way you know for sure you're hanging up and you know for sure you're answering and then you have a voice recognition now this vehicle has a pretty advanced voice recognition system and so it does have a like a manual that you can that tells you the different voice commands and it's definitely worth going into and making sure that you the voice commands that you will potentially use you understand them because it does give you a lot of functionality and you can keep your hands on the wheel eyes on the road and use the system quite a bit just by using the voice recognition system okay so this little arrows and and this okay here in the center that corresponds with the screen between the gauges we'll get to that in just a minute the windshield wiper controls are here now it is a rain sensing system once you turn it on it will you know turn on and off with the rain uh, you also have the ability to have the rear wipers there as well, uh, so it has all those controls there. So here is the turn signal, and it also has the headlight uh, dimmer switch as well. So here's the gauges. It has a nice blue glow, and really the, the red, the blue, the white, uh, different color coding, and um, just visually it's very pleasing, especially at nighttime. You can see it clearly, and during the day of course. So here on the left side, uh, this is actually for the hybrid system. So as the needle goes down, it's charging the battery using your forward momentum. Uh, so when you slow down using the brakes, uh, the brake pedal actually doesn't always apply the brakes. It actually is a blend between recharging the battery, re the regenerative system, and the braking system. So it tries to recharge the battery as much as possible. And of course, you know, your braking system will be used a lot less since it's doing that. Right here, it gives you an estimated fuel economy based on, um, based on the, the 
the fuel and the electricity, it kind of gives it like a blend average and it's not really like, you can drive a long time just on electric power and it's not gonna really go up like you think it would go up. So it it's taken into account the, the fuel but also the electricity and it gives you kind of like a blend average, which is kind of weird and, and it doesn't really, uh, you know, if you're really plugging in and only driving a few miles a day or, or, you know, like under 30 or whatever, and you don't use your gas, you would think that it would just not be, it would be going up tremendously, but it doesn't really do that. So it's kind of weird. Here on the right side gives you the total range with fuel. So you got the fuel right there, and then you got the total, and then you have just electric uh, power there. So right now it's showing I can go six miles on electric with the remaining battery percentage, which is 15. And then I can go 397 miles on the fuel. And it also, when you come to a complete stop, even when the battery is very low, under under 1%, it still turns the engine off and uses some battery power uh, when you're idling, you know, would you when you would potentially be idling and stuff like that. So it's very efficient with the system because you, as you're driving, it does recharge the battery slightly, but not a whole lot. Uh, but it does try to use the, the hybrid system as, as much as possible, even when your battery percentage is very, very low. And then, of course, you have your fuel gauge there, a nice big fuel gauge, easy to read. Um, and it you know basically has a little red there at the bottom that tapers. It looks really nice, just really very pleasing to the eye. Uh, also, a little pump right here has a little arrow pointing to the left, showing you that the fuel door is on the driver's side. So it's really nice. So here in the center, uh, so right now it's showing the driving assist systems imagery. You have a digital speedometer there, the battery percentage, what gear you're in, and uh, right here's the the odometer, and then the status of the lane departure, uh, the lane keep assist system, outside temperature. So it has this information here. So remember these buttons. Now let's use them. So right now I'm gonna scroll up and down and you can see this is part of a menu system. So the very first one is speedometer and it's just a big digital speedometer which is usually my default. Scrolling down, this is the vehicle info uh, part number two. We can scroll right and left. Now that we're in this vehicle info screen, we can go right and left, we can get temperatures and pressures of the vehicle. battery voltage, tire pressure, all that kind of stuff. Scrolling down again, takes us to a driver's assist. That's where we were before, and this shows you, say, once you turn on the adaptive cruise control, it shows you the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you, and the status of the, uh, the distance there and what you can adjust. It also shows like a little picture of a little car right there, if there's a vehicle actually in front of you, and um, and you know what your cruise control set at and all that kind of stuff. So kind of is it is very useful. Also, if you go over the line, it'll kind of give you a visual, uh, kind of visual warning here as well if you're going over the lines. Now it's the type of system to where it just kind of nudges you back in the middle of the lane. It doesn't really, like follow the lines perfectly, uh, but so it's okay. But I mean, it's you know you definitely just drive the vehicle and, and try not to go over the lines basically. All right, so. Um, so if we go down to four, this is the hybrid info. So this gives you basically a kind of a little bit of redundant information here. The range uh, with the fuel, range with the, with the electricity and the total. We can get the uh, hybrid info, the brake and the acceleration efficiency coach here. So it'll let you know like, hey, you know, it'll stay in the green and then it, it'll get out of the green if you're like flooring it and stuff like that. To the right again, gives us the, um, charge and power so it's kind of like this over here this needle it's the same type of deal all right and then it gives you the average fuel economy once again it's kind of kind of weird the way they they calculate it and then the current fuel economy and it goes back to the first one we saw scrolling down again number five is your trip you have trip a and trip b it gives you the the range uh it also gives you or the amount of of the amount of distance traveled based on the electricity, the fuel, total, average miles per gallon, and the time. So there's two of them, so you can reset them independently and keep track of how, what you're using and how efficient you are and all that kind of stuff. The next one is whatever your radio is doing will show up here. Next one will be stored messages. This is where like if you get a notice when you get in the vehicle, like time to change the oil or something, 
it'll show up here in the stored messages. Uh, then you can go into the screen setup. There's a highly customizable screen here. Uh, so the upper left, the upper right, uh, right side, left side, we can go in here and adjust all this stuff. So let's go to right side. You can have um, the electric range only, all electric range, EV and battery percentage. You could have nothing over there if you want. So I'll put all range value there. So yeah, upper left. So right now it's showing the outside temperature. We can put a, tump a compass, we can put the clock, average miles per gallon, current miles per gallon, trip, uh, battery percentage, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or we can have nothing there. So let's go back here to outside temperature. We'll put that back. So you get the idea. You can, you can adjust these different things, put different things in different spots. Um, you can even make the odometer go away, away if you want to. All right, scrolling down again takes us back to the first one, which is the digital speedometer. So it's like the scroll up and down, left to right on some of them to get more information on that particular category. So this is all the start button here. And here is the touch screen. And this is the Uconnect 5 with navigation. And it is, the screen is very impressive looking. It has this clarity and resolution and um, color rendering that is just, just phenomenal I, I really like it uh, there is a few things that you have to get used to on it though uh, especially if you're used to the older you connect systems this one is a little bit quite a bit di different actually it maintains these these icons here at the bottom which is good uh, but it has additional functionality so like say you have like these little icons here at the top as well uh, and these are customizable so when I first got in the vehicle this has the surround view camera and how you'd normally access, uh, access it is either in the apps or the vehicle here, and you can go to uh, right here, surround camera. Um, but I wanted a quicker way, like a like quickly pull it up. And I wish they actually had a button down here to do it, but for some reason they, they didn't have a physical button. So I wanted to have one, and I couldn't get, I couldn't replace one of these with the surround camera, which is very, was surprising to me. So what I found out is that when you pull from the top, we have these icons here um, that they're little shortcuts that you can put at the top. They're smaller, but it basically it's a shortcut that gets to, you know, the same thing. It accomplishes the same thing as the bottom, but it's just smaller. So you just press and hold it and you just drag it up there and then you can place it, which I already placed it up there. So we'll go, um, let's see, we'll go to, go to Alexa, we'll take that. We'll just take that right there and we'll put that and replace that microphone so now it goes there uh, so that way you can you know add different shortcuts here at the top as well as here so you have the family cam you got this the 360 cam I just put the Alexa there and then it has like the Wi-Fi status there Wi-Fi hotspot uh, so pulling from the top gives you that additional functionality there uh, you can also access quickly some of your climate controls here and this is mostly useful for your uh, your your heated and cooled seat as well as your heated steering wheel uh, right in here because there's already buttons down here for the temperature uh, but it does give you the the actual number for the driver and passenger there and it's a two stage heated and cooled seat for the driver and passenger um, so that's kind of like the stuff up there and it has the clock and stuff so let's go to the bottom and this is more like the normal Uconnect system as a home which has what they're calling widgets like the self like a cell phone and you can add different widgets so like right here but it is limited so like I tried to add the shortcut uh, for the camera and I couldn't do it because it didn't show up in the apps so you're limited to these apps for the shortcuts um, but you can put those apps there and you can customize the home screen and put different shortcuts here. Uh, you know, these little widgets can be replaced or changed or whatever. And you can, so like in this case, I added a bunch of shortcut places here, potential shortcuts. And you see the status of the battery, what's charging engine, battery, and climate. You'll notice the engine is measured in kilowatt, uh, kilowatts, which is interesting. So that's the home screen. The next one would be uh, the media. 
and this is right now on the satellite radio it has presets there at the bottom you can direct tune right here uh, you can also change your sources here so it has FM it has AM FM satellite radio Bluetooth USB 1 USB 2 Alexa and auxiliary cable inputs here and then if you go here um, you can listen to the screens in the back so you have one and two so depending on which one you're playing you can tap that into the system and then that way you can listen you know all listen to the same thing basically <clears throat> and then right here is for the um this has the that's that's like a shortcut to access the the phones well it's pretty interesting i'll show you that in just a minute but um that you can actually have two paired phones at the same time usually they would you can pair a bunch of them, but they're on a priority system and only one of them would be active. But you can actually have two paired and active at the same time. Pretty interesting. Okay, so um, it does have the Apple CarPlay Android Auto, which will show up once you connect those devices. So right now you're limited to, um, you know, those aren't on here because it's not plugged in. It's not connected to the system. It's a wireless uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but you have to connect it and start the system up. Once you, as you're pairing it, it'll ask you if you want to set that up. I did not because it's not a system that I, I prefer using. Okay, so you can see what's playing. You have audio settings here, and then the rear seat uh, will show show the screens here, so you can set up the different screens the way you want them. And see what's actually on the screen, what's going on back there, which is pretty cool. I thought it was neat. All right. Next one is the climate control, and uh, this is like a visual representation. There's a lot of buttons here, uh, but this is like where the air is blowing, the temperature for the driver and passenger, um, the rear is controlled here. Uh, you can also sync. Once you sync all the all the everything the rear the front the rear and everything's connected together uh, so right now I have it synced together so as I adjust this right here up and down you can see it adjust it there on the screen you'll see the driver and the passenger is synced together um, so right now it's a 68 if you'll see it back here for the rear climate you can see it's also at 68 because I have it synced all together so um, once you unsync it then they can adjust it back there and um, you know and, and you, you can of course adjust it here separately if you want you can also lock the rear uh, so that way you can keep kids or, and from playing around with the buttons so lock the rear as well the next one is the navigation system and really nice map really nice looking map you can do a search here, find an address that you want or, or a particular thing that you want. It has like a full keyboard layout, which is nice. Also, um, you can do searches as well with your voice, with the voice recognition, which is also awesome. Um, and also you can save addresses and all that stuff. You can have your home, you can add your work, recent ones, um, different trips, have favorites, and then you can uh, put in settings like avoid tolls and stuff like that. So the next icon here at the bottom is your phone, and this is where you can have two active phones right here. You can also set do not disturb, uh, and you can set up the a Android Auto here as well, or Apple CarPlay, depending on what phone you have. You can add multiple devices. The next one is the vehicle. And the vehicle uh, tab here has three uh, folders here. The electric vehicle information, more specific on that, shows the power flow, driving history, like a little graph there, showing you what you've been doing, and schedules on when you want to charge. So if you want to charge the vehicle only at certain times, uh, when the electricity says cheaper or something, you can do that. The next tab here at the top is controls, and this is basically the family cam and the surround camera. The family cam, let's go ahead and hit that, and this is where you can see in the back. Now it has night vision, so you can see day or night. It's very bright even at nighttime. And you can, what you do is you tap, let's say you wanna look at that seat more specifically, it shows you there, or that seat, this seat, or that seat. So you can kinda of like see what's going on in the back. Um, 
using that camera system. And that's the fam cam, they call it family cam. And then the surround camera is here. And this is where it shows like a top down view here. And then you can see uh, it has, that's the rear view, wide rear view, wide front view, uh, more linear front view. And then there's the full, uh, more linear backup camera with the active guidelines, a turn as I turn the steering wheel. You can also zoom in to the center line, the center part of the vehicle there. Now you notice in the very front here, you see these little black things right here and here. That's because that camera is a little bit recessed. And I mentioned that earlier. Uh, those kind of, you know, if it's a little bit too far in. And I think that's why they have this, this like checkered line around the vehicle on the top down view to kind of obscure some of the wonkiness to that location of that camera. All right, um, so the next one is the apps. Uh, and then this is where you can have favorites, uh, recent, it'll just go to the recent one you've used, categories, and then all. So right now we're in all, and you can see the little stars, some of them are, are white, some of them are empty, and those are, con those are the ones that are assigned as favorites. And basically they're, basic, it's not really apps, it's more like different controls and shortcuts to different controls. Uh, so audio settings, I mean that's not really an app, that's just like a place you want to go, it's a destination. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of different things. I like the way it's like colorful and all that stuff. And this is where you go into your settings and, and stuff like that. All right, so the uh, vehicle just turned off because it's sitting here for a long time and it gives me this message right here. Let's go ahead and start it back up. All right. All right, so that's the app. So you basically got the idea as far as these icons here at the bottom. You pull down to the top, you can adjust these little shortcuts here at the very top. And um, yeah, it's a really good looking system. Especially when I haven't, I haven't used it yet, but this screen is so good uh, even on the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So as it has a really good screen, and then that, that, that quality carries over to the other programs as well. So, you know, something to consider if you use those programs regularly. Okay, so down here is the volume for the radio, tuned through the stations over here. Uh, and then you have the, this is actually to uh, park the vehicle. I'd actually turn the steering wheel and park the vehicle. I don't use that. It's not really a thing that I use, but it does have that capability. Uh, parking sensors, you can turn those off. Lane departure system, you can turn that off as well. Traction control, you can turn that off here. So these are like the off buttons. Default is on. Mute the radio, screen off. When you push screen off, it basically um, gives you a blank screen. And one of the things about it, you would think that, hey, look at all those fingerprints. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it, right? But as soon as you start wiping it, it, it turns it back on because you touch the screen to turn it back on. So it, it you basically have to wipe the screen. The best way to do it is wipe the screen when the vehicle's off. Uh, but it, you do have the ability to turn off the screen, which is nice. Four-way flashers are here, and then the redundant uh, climate control button, so driver, passenger temperatures, recirculate the air, front and rear defrosters, um, the automatic function, and m push this button in here to change where you want the air to blow. And they call that the mode. Here's your shifter, and it's basically a dial. So the brake and you can just turn the dial and right now it's po popping up the camera and also letting you know that the, uh, uh, the the parking sensors front and rear are now active it'll beep at you as well as give you a, like a visual reference here if there's something in the way very sensitive parking sensors all right neutral drive and then you have a, when you press it in and push it to the right, it has this L. Uh, so this is max regen. So if you're going down a hill and you want to not just fly down the hill really fast, you want some, like, w w what would be similar to engine braking, and you get the benefit of recharging your battery uh, while you're doing it, and you have this long, steep hill, you're coming down a mountain or something, 
uh, that low range really comes in handy. It recharges the battery and keeps you from going too fast down the hill. And then th th to put it in park, you put it all the way over here to park. This is the electronic parking brake. So you press that and a little light turns on. It engages the rear wheels and it's the parking brake. Hold the brake, the actual brake over here, and press it again to release it. All right, so down here you have the start compartment. It's very dark, but it goes in there quite a ways. Like you can take this phone, this is a Note 10 Plus, and you can put it all the way in basically. So it's a nice useful compartment, put a phone or something, um, but it is dark at nighttime, so you can, and your hand has barely reached the back of it. So if you put something small in there, it's kind of might be a, a pain to get back out. But it does have this little, this little rubber bottom that you can basically take and pull it and and, um, and take it out to clean it and put it back in. All right, so there's a USB-C and regular USB uh, ports there as well, charge ports. This opens up like so. It's got like a gloss black finish. And then you have more USB and USB ports as well as a an auxiliary input as well. And those are backlit so you can see it at nighttime. But this rest of this compartment is once again dark at night. I've given you some spoilers for the night video. I'll just go through all this in the night video. Um, but something worth mentioning. So there's a wireless cell phone charger here. And a little storage space there. And you can keep it... Uh, things in here and to keep them separated and once again you can take out the bottom piece and clean it and put it back in so it has this little little rubber mat which is neat let me see what it looks like underneath it all right so cup holders are here and as you like these little bubbles here on the side they help um, keep your bottle in place and secure different size cups or bottles or whatever and it's open here in the center um, it, to, to utilize the space for more than just cups or just like a handle or whatever all right so it has these armrests that fold down it's just basically up or down there's no ratcheting or anything like that both for the passenger and here for the driver and then it has this little compartment here it's kind of rubberized and it's not really like flat where you, I mean, you could put some stuff here, just kind of like as you're driving, just kind of set it there and the rubberized kind of help out from sliding off, but it's not really like made to put stuff there really, but it's pretty tough. And you push down on this and you can slide it back. And then it has this compartment here. And let me get my business cards out of the way. Um, so it has these place for coins. It has just like a rubberized uh, bottom that you can take out and clean, put it back in. And it has a uh, charge port here. So USB, USB-C, and then a 12 volt power supply. Now you notice it has a little key on it. That lets you know that that 12 volt power supply turns on or off, on and off with the ignition system. <clears throat> the one in the back has a battery on it. Shows that th that one is connected directly to the battery so the, the ignition doesn't have to be on. You can use that anytime. But this one has to have the ignition on. Nice and smooth, like a roll top desk, but it's rubberized. Pretty nice. Okay, so the rearview mirror, it's an auto dim rearview mirror. And it's auto dimming right now because I have the shade over the light sensor, which is located here on the right side back here. Uh, you can turn that feature off by pressing that button. You also have road side assistance buttons here as well. And when that's auto dimming, it also auto dims this driver side. And you can see that side mirror is auto dimming. The passenger side is not. All right, so buttons here. This is for the sunroof. This is for the shade. We'll get to that in a minute. There's a little press. There's this little thing right here. You press it, and it's a mirror, like a conversation mirror, so you can keep an eye on the, the backseat drivers. Now, this is in addition to the, the camera system that it has. This one is for sunglasses or glasses or whatever. It has like a felt lining, but it has that kind of felt lining that eventually kind of like flakes off a little bit. So it's actually flaking off of my hand right now. So, you know, you have to keep that in mind. Uh, and then 
You got these tap lights here, the ability to open up the power lift gate or close it. Uh, and then you can open and close the doors here, or you can turn those off. So if you press that, it has that little light uh, letting you know that like like kids or something can't play around with the buttons and open accidentally open up the door. Um, so you can control it here. We'll get to the sunroof in a minute. Uh, the visors have this black cloth, a little clip right there. Vanity mirrors with the mirror on your face. I mean, mirror and two lights, which is nice. You have a big shadow on your nose. And then the home link garage door opener controls are here. And basically the same thing on the other side, except for the home link garage door opener controls are not on that side. Okay, so the sunroof. Uh, this is a huge sunroof. It goes all the way back to the rear passenger, so it's a panoramic sunroof, and it has a shade that covers 100% of the light, and the control on the right side, right here, you can move it back with that button. So you can press it, it goes back there, press it again to go back. Look at that huge sunroof. It's way back there. Now, if you want to tilt, the, the back portion is fixed. The front portion moves. So we're going to push this, this other button here on the left side. <clears throat> we're going to push it up. Or actually, let's go ahead and slide it back. Push it again. Nothing happens as far back as it goes. Now, if you want to tilt it up, there's a button kind of in the center that you press. And it'll tilt it up. Allow some airflow. Press the same button again. Does nothing. You got to push forward. And that'll that'll close it up. And then the shade. Once again, you can press it. That. And it'll go forward. Goes all the way forward. So that's good. And I like the fact that it covers 100% of the light because sometimes you just don't want any the sun shining on you. Okay, so looking at the visibility there in the back, you notice there's. Uh, there's headrests everywhere, and there is the pillars there, but overall, I mean, you can see pretty good uh, out of the sides there, and directly behind the vehicle is a little bit of an issue because of the headrest on the third row, and it depends on cargoes and passengers and all that stuff, depending on what you have going on back there. It could potentially use a rear view camera uh, maybe in the future they'll add that to help out, but it hasn't really been an issue. I mean, looking over my shoulders, I can see around the vehicle. I can see backing up. It has a rear cross traffic alert, blind spot detection system, parking sensors, a 360 and a backup camera system that's fantastic and very high resolution and looks good. So uh, all that technology and the actual visibility that it has makes it not really a big issue. Start off with a full charge, or like right now, it's showing 100% battery charge. It's showing 38 miles right here on the battery only driving. So it's going to start off with like electric vehicle only. And until it exhausts those miles, until the battery is zero, it probably won't turn on the, ba the engine. So the engine will not run for the first 38 miles, roughly. Now, if you start flooring it or being really aggressive with your driving, it might turn on the engine, but for the most part, it just stays in that EV mode as long as it has a battery charge. So right there, I accelerated a little bit fast and it turned on the uh, gas engine so there is times in which if you need extra power that gas engine is there uh, but typically it'll just stay in EV mode as long as there's there's electric power basically the battery has some charge but if you really floor it you can hear the you can really hear the engine kind of and it, seem, it does it seamlessly. It just kind of starts up, but you can hear the engine kind of rev. And it sounds like it's, uh, you know, you could definitely sell it, sound, you could definitely tell it's a, it's a gas engine. Uh, but it does it seamlessly. It just turns it right off when you don't need it. Until the battery gets down, then it'll start using the, the, the gas engine. It's 
so right now we're on gas we're, we're on just electric you can see by the meter over here that you got electric coming from the battery and also going to the climate control uh, going to the wheels and climate control but as I floor it you'll see where the engine joins in you see that blue right there adds in there now that I let go of the accelerator it should go away So the hybrid system is pretty dang good. The thing, since it's a plug-in hybrid, you really have to have a, a specific, it's like a specific use case. Uh, so you have to be willing to plug it in each night. You have to be driving, you know, 100 miles or less, basically, uh, per day, uh, for the most part. I mean, you can go further, of course, but for the practical use of this vehicle, you know, you want to be able to, not drive that much and that way you take advantage of those uh, initial 35 38 40 miles of EV driving and then you have a little bit of gas driving there uh, supplemental to, supplemented in to your driving so that way you burn off the old gas and stuff like that uh, but the, the big thing is you're willing to and you're able to charge you're able to plug in at night uh, like a garage or a secure you know driveway something like that where you can have your cable out and plugged in the vehicle into an outlet without people stealing the cable because uh, the cables are not cheap and you're just willing to do it you know you have the ability to plug it in and you're willing to do it and then that way in the morning you unplug it you drive and you have the uh, the EV capability now it's not like, when it drives in EV mode, it's not like an electric car. It's able to propel itself forward, uh, but it's not like super fast or anything. Uh, it just has that normal driving capability. Uh, now this one is when the gas engine joins in, it has some pretty good acceleration. But, uh, but it's nothing like it's going to pin you in your seat or anything like an EV, like an actual electric vehicle. Now the average fuel economy is a little bit, the way it calculates is a little bit weird to me, but uh, it basically is showing 34.7 right now. And and basically that's trying to calculate the, the gas and the electric. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how they're, they're figuring it up, but you know, you can go on for a long time without any gas engine at all and it still shows uh, you know, around the same, you know, similar type gas fuel economy. But the Chrysler Pacific, and then this one especially, you know, it, it's it's easy to drive. It's easy. It's really easy to drive. It has lots of room. Uh, it's pretty darn quiet too. There's some little bit of road noise and a little bit of noise here and there but uh, it's as far as keeping exterior noises out it's quiet uh, and also you know once you play the radio or something like that you you pretty much all the background noises kind of kind of go away for the most part and I think it's a well-designed vehicle as far as the as far as the interior controls um, there's a couple things that could be improved or, or or change to match my preferences I'll just say that uh, but you know overall the seats are comfortable it's easy to drive and having that ability to plug in and drive on EV for the first you know 30 40 miles that's pretty cool you know you're you're able to get like in my cases I'm able to get where I'm going most of the time just on EV and I'll basically as I'm driving around where I'm at then I, it eventually will, will turn, it'll mostly be an EV, but then on the return trip, it'll, the gas engine will turn on. And, you know, for not that much. And also, the gas engine is relatively fuel efficient already. So it's not really a big deal.
So you can see as I'm, I'm still driving it easy, um, and we've gone about 10 miles or so, and we're at 79% battery, and we're still in EV right now. And it gives you a precise number for the battery, how much you're using for the climate control, how much the engine is included here, and, and it includes the engine in a kilowatt format, so that way you can kind of like, you know, compare it more to the, uh, what the battery and the, and the electric motor is doing. really likes the the thicker steering steering wheels in the uh, the Chrysler uh, brands because they they really are comfortable they have a little cushion to them and the thicker the steering wheel for my hands since I have big hands the less it kind of digs into my my bones or whatever and I have a you know I still have a firm grip without you know I just feel like it's it's just easier to use and more comfortable for me now the adaptive cruise control uh, is pretty dang good. The the distance between me and the vehicle in front of me is is usually I feel comfortable with it, especially considering I can you know fine tune it. It has the different distances there that I can um, that I can set. But the furthest distance is what I'm concerned about. Some vehicles are you put it at the real far distance and it still feels still feels like a little bit little bit uncomfortably too close so in this case uh, the furthest distance is, is fine you know and that's good and that way you can always pull it in if you need to depending on the situation the seats are comfortable no problem and the passengers have not complained about the you know being uncomfortable in the seats and it's also relatively you know just a smooth gliding vehicle it does you do feel some bumps uh, and all that and you know for the height and the weight of the vehicle I think that it does a pretty good job of handling you know most bumps on the road It's certainly not amplifying the bumps, you know. You can feel the bump, but it's not like it's, um, it's just not like a big deal, really. Like, this this road has kind of got some bad spots in it, and it's not really... Some, sometimes, some vehicles, you're driving down the same road, and it's, like, really annoying. Every bump is, feels annoying, you know. It feels like it's either amplifying them or it's uh, just not handling the the... the the road deviations very well uh, but this one hadn't had any problem I you know it's, it's an enjoyable vehicle to drive you know considering the height off the ground you can get in and out easy the, the sliding doors in the back so you can get in and out with your family and additional passenger passengers um, there's plenty of compartment space the screen resolution is good the camera system is fantastic um, you know, and then with the hybrid system added to, you know, the Pacifica already has a good design. Uh, adding the, the hybrid system, you know, if you like, if you can plug it in, you know, that's the thing. That's that's the major factor there. You know, it's a very, it is going to be limiting because a lot of people live, living in apartment complexes or they park on the street or uh, there's certain places where you just can't get this expensive cable out, run it out, you know have an outlet within you know, 15 feet of your vehicle and then charge it and then you feel fine with you know having that out charging all night uh, you know it, it there's not everybody can do that so if you can do that and you're willing to do that uh, and you like the idea of the hybrid system which I, I, I mean it, 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 does, it does drive nice you know it does have a nice smooth ride the engine's a little bit loud which I was kind of surprised that the engine has a little quite a bit of noise 
uh, when you, when it kicks in. You know, when it, the first time I was driving and it kicked in, I was like, well, is somebody driving a truck next to me? A loud noise, you know, a loud truck or something. So I was kind of surprised that the engine was had that, like, growl sounding uh, exhaust or, or whatever. There's something about it that just a little bit too loud. Uh, or you know, not too loud, but it was, it's loud. it's a little bit louder than I anticipated. I'll just say that. Another thing I want to mention that it basically you don't have the ability to adjust the EV like in the 4xe the 4 the 4xe uh, Jeep Wrangler you can adjust and you can save your battery power and just run on gas um, and then save your battery power to, power for later uh, this one doesn't have the ability to do that you just simply if it has battery power it just uses it and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't preserve it, you can't use it exclusively, you can't change any of that stuff. It's just battery power, when it has it, when it has a charge, it uses it. And, and then when it doesn't, it doesn't use it, and that's it. Okay, so I'm accelerating a little bit easier, so the engine didn't turn on that time. And you can get up to highway speeds, no problem, you know, as long as you're not flooring it uh, with just the electric system. I was, I was pretty surprised. You can just cruise along on the highway, you know, 65 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour on electric. And apparently, you know, the electric motor is powerful enough to withstand the wind resistance and all that stuff. So, pretty neat. So there you have it. Thank you for watching and let me know what you think of this vehicle and I'll see you guys next time.